everyone, Jan here. Codingwithjan.com. So today, super quick video on how to connect Cursor with Shopify's MCP server. Yeah, this is gonna drastically improve the code quality of your AI assistant. Also leads to fewer hallucinations because we're giving Cursor direct access to Shopify's documentation. The whole setup takes like one minute. And then I'm also gonna explain the idea behind MCP servers a little bit so that you know why they're going so viral at the moment. Personally, I'm also learning a lot about AI automations and AI development at the moment. And I will have more updates on this soon. It's not always perfect, but other things that used to take me like three hours, I now get done in like 15 minutes. And yeah, also if you wanna to work together or become a Shopify developer yourself, links in the description as usual. And now let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Cursor. And first, let me show you an example without the MCP dev server connected. Um, this is actually a real world example that I encountered a couple of days ago. I had to write a simple GraphQL query to get the shop's currency and also the primary locale, so the primary language if you want. So let's bring up the AI agent and I've prepared a simple prompt, like, hey, I need a simple GraphQL query to get the currency and primary locale. Let's execute this. All right, so here's the result we got. And yeah, at first glance, this might look okay. So here we have like the shop, we try to get the currency code and then the primary domain and the locale. But if we bring this to a development store with a GraphQL app installed, which basically lets, lets you test GraphQL queries. Let's paste this right here, try to execute. And you can already see that the field locale doesn't seem to exist under primary domain. So it clearly made up stuff that doesn't exist or doesn't seem to work. And now we'd have to go into the documentation, compare it, maybe find another way to make this work. And it would definitely take me some time to debug this. Okay, so then next, let's see how we can connect the MCP server. Uh, I think the best way to go about it is open the GitHub project. I will link this in the description as well. And then if you scroll down, we find the install instructions right here, also for cursor. Uh, depending on whether you're on Mac or Windows, you either need to copy the first or second command. Day to day, I'm using Mac, but recording like right now I'm recording on the Windows machine so I'll use this command here copy it to my clipboard and then back in cursor we can just click on file preferences cursor settings and somewhere in here you should find a menu item tools and integrations and here we have the option to add a custom MCP so I click on that and then just paste everything that I have in clipboard and when you close the config we should already see the new Shopify dev MCP, which is now connected. You can see this in the green with the green indicator. And if you unfold this, you can also see the tools that are contained, for example, search dev docs or introspect admin schema. Okay, so this is pretty much everything we needed to do. So I'll close out the settings here and come back to the code snippet that was generated earlier. I clear this out. And now for direct comparison, let's start with a blank chat and rerun the exact same prompt that we had in the beginning. So let me execute this. Let's wait for the results. Now it's calling the introspect admin schema from the MCP server, or it's asking to do that. So I have to manually uh, allow this tool to run. Okay, so Nodus has been running for a bit and fixing itself. This is the new result that we got. The query looks slightly different. So now we have the shop object here with currency code. And then we also fetch the shop locales, including the primary field so that we could filter for that. And let's actually try to copy this query now and then bring it back to the development store, paste, execute. And now it's working. We get back the shop currency and all the shop locales, which I could now filter for the primary one which is English in this case. But yeah, main point is query works out of the box and I don't have to fix it manually. Awesome. All right, and that's already it for the setup. I know this is pretty straightforward and just a simple example, but it demonstrates very well how we get better code quality, fewer bugs, fewer hallucinations, and we can just get more things done in the same time. So I hope you find this helpful. Now, if you're still using ChatGPT and copy pasting code back and forth, I think now is a good time to switch to cursor because it also has access or context across multiple files in your projects. So that's really helpful. And also, if you've never been using a proper code editor like VS Code or Cursor for Shopify development, then definitely make sure to check out Shopify CLI because that lets you sync all the files on your local PC 
with the Shopify store and I also have a video on that. Okay, now if you've been wondering about this whole MCP server concept, like what is it? What is actually happening behind the scenes? Why is everyone hyping this up? I got a really cool e-commerce example for you. Are you ready for this? Okay, so check this out. This is like a, a coffee brand that I have right here. And let's imagine they had a live chat and then customer comes in and yeah, maybe wants to know about their order status. Like, hey, where's my order? Now behind the scenes, this chat message, where's my order? now gets sent to our server. And we could technically just forward this to a large language model. Let's just call this ChatGPT. And yeah, that would give us a human-like response that we could then feed back to the user. The problem, however, is that this language model has been trained on a certain data set in the past, and it doesn't have real-time data or access to, let's say, our fulfillment statuses or order list. And it also can't make API calls. So it can't even fetch the data because language models are really good at language, but they don't know how to make HTTP requests or GraphQL queries. Yeah, so this is the main problem we're trying to solve. Like how can we feed real-time data into our language model or how can we enable it to make API calls or use external tools, which is extremely important if you want to build AI agents, obviously. Now the solution or workaround that smart people came up with is that we slightly tweak our process. So when a chat message comes in, where's my order? we still receive that on our server. But this time we don't just forward the message itself. We also forward a list of all the available tools. In this case, I just put order list, but it could also be multiple tools that the language model should have access to. And the language model, even though it can't use these tools properly, can tell you what it would like to use or which data it would be interested in. So it can basically explain the tool calls it would like to make. And then our server, which is capable of making API calls and such, could call the APIs on behalf of the language model. For example, fetch some data from the order list regarding this specific order here, and then feed that information back to the language model. And only then we get the final response that we send back to the user. Yeah, so it's actually not that complicated. You basically just add an additional step where you tell the language model what tools it has available and let it decide which one might be useful. Okay, so far so good. I hope this makes at least a little bit of sense up until this point. And when you start to research this, you might also stumble upon vocabularies such as MCP host, MCP agent, MCP server. And right now I've grouped all of this into one single icon. But if you want to break this down in detail, there's probably a part of your server which handles all the communication like the communication between incoming messages and then also the language model. And that part of the server, which is handling all the communication and keeping track of conversations, is usually called the MCP host. The MCP host also describes all the tools that we have access to, like, hey, we have access to the order list, for example. Then when the language model tells you what tools to use, usually the MCP agent takes care of the logic and the routing. And then the MCP agent talks to the MCP server, which is the part that actually makes the tool call. Yeah, so the MCP server would then look up the order API, for instance. And there could also be multiple MCP servers if you have like 10 tools, for, for example. And then the agent always decides which MCP server to call. So yeah, that's basically the full picture. MCP host takes care of the conversation. MCP agent takes care of the routing and logic and MCP server or multiple servers actually make the tool calls and the API calls and then feed back the information. Cool, and I think that's all you need to know for the moment. Whether you need the theory or not, I don't know, but I always find it nice to have at least a little bit of background understanding yeah, so that you can project this knowledge onto like any project or do I even have to explain this? <laughs> Just have a little bit. It, it, it never hurts to have, let's say, some information about what's going on. Cool. That's all I have. Really hope you learned something new. Let me know if you got any questions or how you like this video. And then I'll see you in the next.